So here we discuss monotonicity properties of a sequence. So let A and B a sequence where n ranges from 1 to infinity, yeah, n is a natural number, then if any subsequent element, so if I take a, an element a n and suppose that it holds that a n plus 1 is always larger than a n for all n uh, being a natural number, then we will call the sequence monotonically increasing. And uh, if uh, something similar holds, only now we have the converse inequality. So a n, if a n, a subsequent element, is smaller than the former one, then its predecessor, then for all n in n, then we will call a n monotonically decreasing. Now, we have the following fascinating central theorem central in this clip, which is called the monotonic convergence theorem, and this entails sequences. So it's a statement about sequences, and it says that any monotonic sequence, so a monotonic sequence that is either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing, any such monotonic sequence that is bounded has a limit. So why is this useful? Well, sometimes we will see through an example that actually sometimes you cannot find a formula for a sequence, but you can find its limiting behavior by first showing that it has a limit and sometimes you will be able to calculate it. So here's the proof of the monotonic convergence theorem. Yeah, monotonic sequence that is bounded has a limit. Well, a proof goes as follows. So suppose we have a monotonically increasing and bounded sequence. Yeah. Well, a proof for monotonically decreasing works the same way. It's not really different, so without loss of generality, let's assume that a n is a monotonically increasing and bounded sequence. Then we make up, like before, we discuss the set a n, the set v, which contains all elements in the sequence. And this is a non-empty set. And since the sequence is bounded, we know that V is bounded. And if V is bounded, then it's bounded from above. So we have a least upper bound, which is called the supremum of V. The supremum of V exists. What we are now about to show is that actually this sub of V, the supremum of V, is equal to the limit of n to infinity of a n. Well, as an illustration, let's see what happens. Yeah, so we graph the sequence, we make a look at the graph of the sequence, which are actually dots for natural numbers n then first indicate the supremum of V, yeah, the set of all elements in the sequence. Now here is the graph. Here are the dots belonging to the graph of the sequence. And we assume that it's monotonically increasing, so we see that the sequence goes up. Now, assume that epsilon is larger than zero, then we'll need to show that actually we find 
an index n such that the a n for this index and further on that the difference between the supremum of v and the elements a n is smaller than epsilon. If we can if we can show this, then actually we've shown that the limit of the sequence is the supremum of V. Well, actually, that's a statement. So then there must be an n star such that a n star is larger than the supremum of V minus epsilon. Well, why is that? Why would that be? Well, think of it for a moment. Well, if there would not be such a thing, yeah, a n star larger than the supremum of v minus epsilon for a positive epsilon, yeah, then we would have the property that a n is smaller than the supremum of v minus epsilon for all n. So the whole sequence would be below the supremum of v minus epsilon. But then the supremum of v minus epsilon would be a smaller upper bound than the supremum of v. But the supremum of v was the smallest upper bound for the sequence. So this cannot be true. So this uh, finding a smaller upper bound leads to contradi contradiction here. Yeah, so this is a contradiction. So now, now we may conclude that there should be an n star such that a n star is at least the supremum of v minus epsilon. Yeah, so a n star should be larger. There should be an n star such that a n star is larger than the supremum of v minus epsilon. Now choose n epsilon, capital N epsilon. by picking this n star. Yeah, what we have then, and then you may look at the, the figure, that since we have an increasing sequence, a yeah, monotonically increasing sequence, that we have for n larger than capital N epsilon, that the supremum of v minus epsilon, well, we indicated that a n star is larger than the supremum of v minus epsilon. Yeah, so a n star is larger than the supremum of v minus epsilon. But since we have a monotonically increasing function or sequence, then a n star should be smaller or equal than a n. But a n is bounded from above by the supremum of v. So now we've shown that actually for n larger than this capital N epsilon, yeah, so for indices larger than n capital N epsilon, that the difference between a n and the supremum of v is at most epsilon. So the limit of a n equals the supremum of v. This is what we needed to show.